welcome to another session of business data science with Jalali. Okay, today we are going to dive right into the part two of AI applications in the healthcare industry. In part one of this, we talked about what I consider as the, the more scientific part uh, of, uh, you know, AI uh, applications within the healthcare industry. So we talked about clinical diagnosis and decision support. We talked about drug discovery and development and how AI is actually helping there. And we talked about predictive and preventive healthcare. And we talked about precision medicine. So if you have not actually watched this part one video yet, I'm linking it right here for you because you will learn all those four major ways uh, of how AI is transforming the healthcare sector okay of course those are more the scientific ones so in this part two we are going to talk more about the business part which of course i have been doing for many years okay so number one what i call healthcare operations and administration look every business every organization uh, has an an operation element and healthcare is, is, is not different okay so you can leverage AI to improve efficiency you know reduce costs and enhance patient outcome and experience okay just like you would do for any business so number one you can actually do you can use AI to you know schedule and optimize uh, healthcare staffing and resourcing okay uh, do you remember sometimes you go to the hospital and you know there's a long queue that you have to wait for or sometimes you go and there are a lot of nurses sitting down and doing nothing well AI can help with proper staffing uh, and, 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 and you know queue optimization so you can you know AI can predict the patient flow you can optimize staffing based on that and can minimize a lot of waste just as we do in every business okay so that's what that's what I, I i label as scheduling and resource optimization okay another thing under this healthcare operation and administration is what i call revenue cycle management so you can use ai to automate you know bill payments you know how to follow up on insurance claims uh you know you can use natural language processing to automate several things under revenue cycle management. And also, guess what? AI can, can, can help with, with clinical documentation, okay? In particular, generative AI can, can actually convert uh, physician notes into documents, uh, you know, can quickly analyze, uh, you know, the demographic data, you know look at your your reports that your doctors give you organize them in ways that you can easily understand or even do a lot of you know voice transcription look last time i went to see a doctor they just turned on the device and as we talk the device was recording and at the end of my visit the doctor just print out a report for me clearly done by ai so these healthcare operations and administrations are very important things that AI can help with and this is very common uh, in, in, in businesses uh, as well okay now number two is what I call virtual health and patient engagement okay of course we all know chatbots chatbots are all over the place but you can train chatbots and virtual assistants for healthcare communication and healthcare, uh, you know, related question answering. So, you know, AI systems can can help answer, you know, your health related questions for you. It can help schedule your appointment. You know, you can report issues to them. But be careful. Don't take medical advice from chatbots just like that. You must be careful here, okay? Another thing uh, that AI can do is what we call remote monitoring, okay? So if you have wearable data, uh, there can be a system that is syncing your your wearable information to your medical service provider and you know ai can look at that data uh, and give you indications of your heart rate maybe your glucose level uh, or detect any uh, you know abnormalities in your data okay and of course you can train ai systems to also give you personalized health coaching 
that one is tricky okay i can recommend diet for you you know some exercising for you all of these things of course must be done under proper governance i keep em- emphasizing that because when it comes to healthcare, we don't joke with it okay public health and epidemiology okay public health and epidemiology is another area where ai is contributing a lot okay so you can use ai for disease surveillance and population health management for example maybe there is outbreak outbreak somewhere you can use ai to actually monitor the outbreak you can even use social media data with ai uh, to forecast you know areas where some of these diseases are you know are, are, are happening at of course we all saw it during during covid right social media data was used uh, you know ai was used to look at certain areas uh, you know and even how to distribute the right medical equipment and, and and all of that okay that's the first part okay you can use ai for health policy optimization so maybe you know for example from a public health some point you implement some policy somewhere you can use ai to actually use proper data to assess the impact of some of these interventions so vaccination strategies you know maybe pandemic uh, controls how are they working ai can help you uh, with, 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 with all this analysis and this insights uh, to be able to properly manage public health okay and finally environmental health monitoring you can put ai in place uh, you know and use ai to correlate environmental data with health outcomes so you can use that to inform policy uh, decisions so you know under health uh, public health and epidemiology ai actually can do a lot okay now of course ai can do a lot of things but let me say let me add one more okay generative ai in healthcare which is a very new frontier is emerging can do a lot of things uh, in healthcare that i have not mentioned yet so for example you can use uh, generative ai to automate you know clinical knowledge summarization you can use it to basically create report doctor's report you can use it to do medical report generation you can build a lot of conversational clinical agents you know using large language model to assist different aspect uh, you know of of your clinical process okay so you can have like nurses having their own chatbot you can have like you know people working in the lab like you know in, in the medical labs uh, that like the radiology and the lab assistant having their own chatbots to kind of help them work faster ask whatever question they need because guess what nobody can have all the things they need to know for their work in their mind so you can actually use ai uh, to create systems and special agents for all of your workers so look i can keep talking 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 about ai and its application in healthcare but i just thought it's important for us to know also that among all other things that ai can do we all know the good side and the bad side of ai okay when it comes to healthcare we have to be very cautious so there must be proper governance in place uh, before we can actually use ai for healthcare okay all the things that i've discussed from part one to part two of the video it's very important that all of these things are done with proper ai governance proper data because guess what garbage in garbage out that's bad data okay and these are people's life that ai is making the decision with you know you don't have to trust ai recommendations uh you know from the medical uh you know from this this a medical ai systems when you don't have you know consultation with your doctors and all of that so of course i'm saying all of these things to warn everyone okay so ai is a double-edged sword so we have to always make sure we, we we use it well so if you think about the part one and the part two i've discussed about eight different ways uh, that ai can actually uh, you know help okay number one we talk about clinical diagnosis and decision support number two we talk about drug discovery and development we also talk about predictive and preventive healthcare then we talk about precision medicine okay uh, after that we also talk um, about basically 
healthcare operations and administration okay that's one of the things we talk about so that's number five okay number five uh, and then number six we talk about virtual health and patient engagement which of course i say is the is the business side of things and then we talk about public health and epidemiology and finally we talk about generative ai in healthcare which is basically using gen ai to do all sort of things like report generation synthetic data generation and and, and all of that so i hope this is very helpful to you but make sure you do this cautiously with the right governance and ethics see you later bye bye